Well, we've reached the end of the road, and it has been a strange trip. One hour to press. You're fired. Really? Don't cry in my office. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to my road to Asteroid City and the conclusion of my road to Asteroid City. I've covered every Wes Anderson movie up to the French Dispatch in honor of Asteroid City coming this weekend. The playlist link will be in the eye in the right hand corner, go check that out. But to close things out, let us dive into 2021's The French Dispatch. This stars, well, pretty much the ca the usual cast of characters. There's a Wilson, there's a Murray, there is a McDormand, there is a Tilda Swinton. However, there are some newbies in here, including Timothy Chalamet. It tells the story of the last issue of the French Dispatch magazine of the New Liberty Kansas Evening Sun. Long story short, the magazine's editor, Arthur Howitzer Jr., played by Bill Murray, has passed away before the film starts. And in his last wishes, the magazine is to be dissolved, the printing press is destroyed, all the reporters to be paid their full salary up until the last day, and subscribers be reimbursed the remaining of their subscription fee. Basically, it's a scorched earth policy. And this movie covers about four separate stories in basically the last issue of the French Dispatch. In my research, I found that Wes Anderson pretty much made this film as kind of a love letter to journalism, specifically print journalism, and even more specifically, the New Yorker magazine. As a matter of fact, he molded the Arthur Howitzer Jr. character off of the current editor of the New Yorker magazine. He loved that magazine, just to put a finer point on it. And this movie does feel like you're reading an actual magazine from cover to cover. First and foremost, the movie looks absolutely stunning, as we have come to expect from Wes Anderson by this point. Robert Yeoman pretty much makes this movie look absolutely stellar. It, I don't want to say this is peak symmetry. I still think that's Grand Budapest Hotel. However, this movie comes pretty close to peak symmetry, especially considering that it goes from bright colors to black and white in the concrete masterpiece segment of the movie. It, it's very impressive. The great irony of this movie is that the town that this movie takes place in in France is called Ennui au Blasé, which translates to boredom and apathy. And the movie could not look any less boring. The cast is, of course, solid across the board. Bill Murray is not in the movie all that much, but when you do see him, he is predictably really good. Owen Wilson is predictably good. Francis McDormand is predictably good. Timothy Chalamet is... I'm sure you get the idea by this point. The movie does a good job of highlighting the reporters of this of the French Dispatch and showing that they all have their own quirks, for lack of a better word. But the movie does, does such a good job by presenting it that it doesn't come across as annoying. It comes across as like, yeah, I'd like to have dinner with these people. I think my favorite personality overall, I'd have to go with Tilda Swinton. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of her regardless, but I'd love to have dinner with this art presenter. Because this movie is broken up into essentially four separate stories, there are no consistent actors on screen. Each one gets their own story. Like, for example, Javier Bardem and Adrian Brody are in this movie, but they're just in the concrete masterpiece and nowhere else. Jeffrey Wright is in this movie, but only in his story. Frances McDormand is only in her story. So if you're going into this movie looking for a certain individual, you might have to muddle through some stuff in order to get there. And when I say that I like this movie and I don't love it, let me explain. I like this movie from a technical standpoint. I think it's fantastic. But I don't love this movie because I feel like the biggest problem with this movie is that it feels like you're reading four very different, very separate stories. When I feel like if Wes Anderson had just focused up and only presented one, I think it would have been much better. 
And I think that's my issue with Wes Anderson's like later work. I feel like with his early work, he chooses one subject and he sticks with that. But I feel like post Fantastic Mr. Fox and like maybe like say getting into say Grand Budapest Hotel, I feel like Wes Anderson has three ideas that he's really high on and wants to explore, but tries to focus on too many things. And so they just come across, or at least a couple of them come across as half-baked. I think where the money would lie with a movie like this is in the editor, Arthur Howitzer Jr. You really don't know all that much about him. You get all the information you need to know in like the first 15 minutes. And I honestly kind of feel like there could have been more with that. I would have loved to have seen the relationship he had with these writers, like why he kept them around despite them being so eccentric, why he kept the dude who was always eating the bag of chips and never wrote a single article in the history of the magazine, and yet he was still there, and he, why he was always so lenient with these people. I wanted to know. Why did he never return to Kansas? Just so many unanswered questions. I feel like could have been kind of a Citizen Kane-esque narrative here. But instead, we get these four separate stories that are intriguing, but I feel like just could have could have worked as just one solo movie that Anderson was really high on instead of four sort of kind of good ideas. Ultimately, though, I cannot deny the craft of the movie. I am going to give it a great rating. It was honestly better than I remember because I remember seeing it in theaters. It was just after the theaters opened permanently after COVID. So I was seeing as much as I could. So French Dispatch was definitely on the list. I remember liking it, but I think upon this rewatch, I grew a bit of a new respect for it. Again, I wish Anderson would just pick one story and stick to it. But I'm glad that he made his passion piece about his love of the New Yorker magazine and magazines like it. But I pass it off to you. What did you all think of French Dispatch? Let me know in the comments section. I'd love to read what you have to say. And I'd like to thank you all for checking out this series. It really was a very interesting series indeed. I was not expecting to not like some of Anderson's stuff as strongly as I did. But I'm kind of glad I did. I think his career tra trajectory can start off kind of low, but then when he hits Fantastic Mr. Fox, he really gets high, like like high highs. Like I feel like I think I think like I think we're seeing prime Wes Anderson right now, and with the reviews for Asteroid City coming in and they are very strong. I'm very much looking forward to it. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to allow notifications so when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.